from a LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy game set that was canceled to the billion dollar brick race movie that didn't end up happening. These are some canceled LEGO products we all really wish hadn't been canceled. Kicking things off with some very exciting LEGO game projects, including some tied to Marvel and Star Wars, got canceled at TT Games this year. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga had become quite a fan favorite over the years. However, despite its success, it seems that the positive response wasn't enough to secure the fate of various other LEGO projects. Nintendo Life also reported that TT Games had pulled the plug on several upcoming ventures, including an undisclosed Disney project codenamed Project Marley. This game was rumored to showcase multiple worlds and Disney characters from Jungle Book, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Pirates of the Caribbean, Toy Story, and Frozen, essentially a LEGO version of Dreamlight Valley. Unfortunately, it seems TT Games faced many challenges in steering the direction of the project, and the success of Dreamlight Valley may have been a deciding factor. Project Marley was supposedly four years into development and it got cancelled. But another cancelled project is Project Cosmic, believed to be LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy. And this game was reportedly 18 months into development, marking another significant setback. However, it's not all bad news. The Mandalorian DLC for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, although rumored to be in jeopardy, hasn't been outright cancelled officially. Unlike the other character packs TT Games have predominantly released, the Mando DLC aimed to introduce a new narrative to the LEGO Star Wars universe. It's disappointing to see these projects face setbacks, especially considering the creative potential they held, but hey, let's not hope anything else gets cancelled. But that's it for LEGO games, now let's move on to themes. LEGO Adventurers. It's June 1998 and LEGO introduces us to the thrilling Adventurers theme. Headlined by the dashing Australian explorer Johnny Thunder, also known as Sam Grant and Joe Freeman, this theme took us through various sub-themes like Egypt, Jungle, Dino Island, and Orient Expedition. Fast forward to Spring 2003, though, and the adventure sadly came to an end. A notable legacy of this theme is the exhilarating ride in Legoland California and Legoland Florida 2, where riders got to wield laser pointer guns to fend off enemies. A pretty short-lived theme, it only ran about six years. Agents. In summer of 2008, LEGO gave us the high-octane Agents theme, featuring an elite team of secret agents battling the notorious Dr. Inferno and his international crime syndicate. The action continued into 2009 with Agents 2.0. Each set was not just a build, it also came with a short comic strip providing background to the set's action. One standout was Mission 5 Turbo Card Chase, which even included a credit card sized identity card for added spy vibes. But sadly, this theme is now part of LEGO history and it has been discontinued but not forgotten. Alpha Team In 2001, LEGO brought the video game LEGO Alpha Team to life with the Alpha Team theme, centered around a group of secret agents, once again, thwarting the villainous Ogle world's domination plans. Alpha Team was an absolute hit. The initial run lasted from 2001 to 2002, so only about a year, and it closely tied to the original video game. After a brief hiatus in 2003, the theme made a comeback from 2004 to 2005, so again, another year, sporting a refreshed cast of characters, a new logo, and a focus on transforming vehicles. While Alpha Team had its moment in the LEGO spotlight, it eventually retired, and it, it's weird, it only ran for one year, then disappeared, then ran for a year, and now it's gone for good. But, but I, I mean, I've never had one of these sets. LEGO Alien Conquest. Ever since 1979, the LEGO group and space themes have been an inseparable duo, much like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Bad joke. While previous LEGO classic space themes were often focused on intergalactic factions or planetary exploration, the LEGO Alien Conquest theme brought the extraterrestrial excitement a little closer to home. Imagine little green men invading Earth not for resources or conquest, but to snatch humanity's brain power. That's the whole idea behind LEGO Alien Conquest, and it's a theme that took inspiration from America's 1950s sci-fi cinema aesthetic. The character and vehicle designs were straight out of pop and pulp culture. Saucer-shaped ships, menacing three-legged war machines, and bug-eyed Martians with exposed brains. It was definitely a nostalgic nod to the drive-in movie era. On the flip side of the extraterrestrial coin, however, LEGO introduced the Alien Defense Unit, or ADU, a team of heroic astronauts serving as Earth's last line of defense. These brave ADU troopers took the fight to the cosmic invaders, with sets allowing them to blatantly battle in the air and on land. The LEGO Alien Conquest theme only came out with seven sets total, all released in a single wave during May of 2011, with a couple of polybags hitting shelves later that year. A highlight was the Alien Conquest Battle Pack in June, featuring two aliens, a pair of ADU troopers, and one civilian. Unfortunately, the joyride with LEGO Alien Conquest was a short one, leaving fans like me wondering why the plug was pulled so soon. So yeah, it sucks it got cancelled, it was one of my first themes that I ever owned, and yeah, we're just gonna move on. LEGO Pharaoh's Quest. This is where we really stepped into the world of ancient tombs.
items, buried treasure, cursed mummies, and desert escape pads with LEGO Pharaoh's Quest, a theme that taps into the swashbuckling spirit in all of us. This LEGO theme doesn't just offer dynamic builds, it's also a treasure trove of memorable minifigures and thrilling play experience straight from the scenes of a Hollywood action adventure blockbuster. Coming out in January of 2011, LEGO Pharaoh's Quest marked a departure from the usual non-licensed theme by the LEGO group. The storyline follows archaeologist professor, I'm not even gonna try to say that name, along with explorers Jake Rains and Helena Scavelings, and the grease monkey mechanic demolitions expert Mac McLeod. Together, they embark on a quest to uncover Pharaoh Amesre, right, or what are these names? Six mysterious treasures. This theme has it all too. Booby trap tombs, flying mummies, giant scarab beetles, slithering snakes, stinging scorpions, supernatural statues, and a steadfast sphinx. The sets from LEGO Pharaoh's Quest not only brought these elements to life, but also delivered on innovative play features and captivating buildable environments. But it wasn't just about exploring ancient mysteries. The LEGO Pharaoh's Quest sets included a funky variety of vehicles for our heroes to navigate on. From scooped up hot rods and rugged desert trucks to awesome armored ATVs and a slick biplane with a nifty grab function for those hard to reach treasures. The creativity knew no bounds and there were so many different options. So what exactly happened to this adventure pack theme and why did we only get one wave of six sets, two poly bags, and a three minifigure battle pack before it vanished into the sands of time? Well, unfortunately, I, I don't know. Lego Atlantis. The lost civilization of Atlantis, a tale that has intrigued scholars, sparked debates, and fired up the imaginations of curious minds since Plato first spun the yarn. Is it a myth? Is it a reality? Is it just all some fictional story? Is it real? Is it not? Everyone wants to know. But anyways, in January of 2010, the Lego group decided to now join the exploration party by launching its first wave of a thrilling theme dedicated to the legendary Atlantis. Picture futuristic underwater vehicles like the Deep Sea Raider and Neptune Carrier on a mission to scour the seafloor for the buried city and its treasures. Enter Atlantis Exploration Headquarters, a playset with all the bells and whistles nominated for the Toy Award 2010 at the 60th International Toy Fair Nuremberg in the category of Games Plus Action. Unlike other LEGO underwater exploration themes, Atlantis went beyond shipwrecks and treasure chests. It gave us ancient ruins with pillared Parthenon-esque structures reminiscent of mid-5th century BCE Greek architecture. The LEGO Atlantis theme also introduced a rich underwater kingdom populated by original sea creature or characters, each with their own unique designs like the Barracuda Guardian, Hammerhead Warrior, Manta Warrior, Lobster Guardian, Shark Warrior, and Squid Warrior. And despite running for only three waves and offering a total of 20 sets, four polybags, and a pair of activity books with collectible LEGO minifigures, LEGO Atlantis had a relatively short production life of about a year. The reasons behind its brief run still remain a mystery, though speculation suggests that its connection to history and mythology may have left some young LEGO enthusiasts scratching their heads. While the Atlantis theme may have been a bit ahead of its time, many fans, and even myself included, wish we could have seen more of its zany potential. I just wanted to see more siege creatures, further exploration of its captivating mythology, and even more crossovers with other LEGO themes. LEGO Dino. Before 2012's Dino theme, the LEGO group had already dipped its toes into the drastic waters with ventures like the year 2000's Adventurer's sub-theme, Dino Island, showcasing molded dinosaurs like the T-Rex and Stegosaurus. The LEGO Studios theme in 2001 and the standalone Dinosaurs theme also brought dinosaurs to the forefront. However, it was with the 2012 Dino theme that LEGO truly reached its prehistoric pinnacle. Imagine highly detailed, fabulously articulated dinosaur models, including the Raptor, Colophysis, Triceratops, Perturnodon, and an imposing Tyrannosaurus Rex. The T-Rex alone was a behemoth compared to its predecessors, setting the stage for a dynamite LEGO adventure. The sets themselves were also a visual feast, featuring vehicles like trucks, hydroplanes, helicopters, and jeeps, complemented by magnificent play sets too. Pterodon Tower, with its 136 pieces, offered a tranquilizer gun, an original printed computer screen tile, and even a sleek jet boat. However, the highlight was the Dino Defense Headquarters, an absolute showstopper boasting four minifigures, three dinosaurs, a helicopter, a car, a headquarters with a laboratory, tranquilizer refilling station, and a communication center. It was a testament to the fact that a great LEGO theme doesn't always need a license to shine. Yet despite the brilliance of the LEGO Dino theme, it vanished without a trace. And why? Well, that still remains a mystery, but the speculation with this one points to the impending release of Colin Trevorrow's Jurassic World, which was still a few years away. Perhaps 2012's LEGO Dino theme just served as an audition tape, a prototype showcasing LEGO's proudness in courting Universal and proving what they could achieve with the franchise. And while many LEGO fans do appreciate evergreen and original themes over 
super licensed ones, there's always a certain charm to a theme that exists without the constraints of intellectual property. The dino theme with its endless possibilities could have been a long lasting favorite, but it got canceled. Lego Monster Fighters. With this one, you had vampires, werewolves, ghouls, ghosts, and gill men, the whole creepy creature crew straight from the best monster movies, and they were all there. Sure, the Lego Studios theme took a dip into the eerie waters back in 2002, but it wasn't until May of 2012 that the Lego group fully embraced the classic horror vibe with their spooktacular Monster Fighters theme. At the heart of the Monster Fighters story was the menacing Lord Vampire, a bloodsucker on a quest to snatch up all the mighty moonstones and harness their magical powers. Alongside him were creepy sidekicks like the Swamp Creature, Mummy, Crazy Scientist with his monster, and a bunch of other familiar faces from the spooky genre. Basically, the Lego Monster Fighters theme whisked fans into a fantastic and original world, blending freshness with familiarity. The minifigures sported new prints and molds, and the sets boasted unique play features and atmospheric settings, and the vehicles were a blast with heaps of variety across the entire theme. But now, the burning question. Why did this get the axe the same year it came out? Like, it didn't even last a year. Maybe the LEGO group just thought they exhausted the classic movie monster roster with a single wave. Or maybe they were just worried that the Monster Fighters theme tiptoed a bit too close to the edge of acceptability for a children's toy. Whatever the real reason was, it was definitely the wrong one because Monster Fighters deserved a longer run, but unfortunately, it didn't get that. The Billion Brick Race. The LEGO franchise has had quite a run on the big screen, kicking off with a bang, but one intriguing project that never saw the light of day was the Billion Brick Race, a film in development by the LEGO group and Warner Brothers. Unfortunately, not much is actually known about this one movie. Initially, it was set to be the third spin-off from the original LEGO movie. The franchise's first installment proved that there was a keen audience for such movies. It's still hailed as one of the best animated movies in recent years, and actually the success of the LEGO movie gave rise to the LEGO iteration of Batman, leading to the creation of the spin-off, the LEGO Batman movie, where many memes, including this one, came out of it. The franchise then eventually ventured into the original properties like Ninjago, but the billion brick race, however, was meant to be a standalone spin-off steering clear of characters from other movies. It, it was kind of a weird thing. True to its name, the film aimed to be a racing picture, drawing inspiration from classic films in the genre. Writer Drew Pierce even dropped a hint mentioning Cannonball Run as one of the influence for the creative team. A racing-themed movie with LEGO characters would undoubtedly attract big-name stars and provide a perfect canvas for the writers to weave in their memorable meta jokes, a comedic style that worked wonders in the previous LEGO films. But unlike other spin-offs in the LEGO universe, the Billion Brick Race would have introduced an all-new property to the LEGO brand. While Batman was a character Warner Brothers already owned, and Ninjago an original LEGO creation, this racing flick promised fresh, uncharted territory, and it, it, it's kind of a big risk to take. Despite the filmmaker's passion for the project and the interest it generated in the LEGO community, Warner Brothers eventually had to pull the plug, leaving us to wonder about the untold bricks and speed adventures that might have been. And I'm actually wondering, leave a comment if you would have wanted to watch this. Me personally, I don't really know. Ben 10 Alien Force. This was a LEGO theme that made a brief appearance on the scene in 2010, only to bid us a farewell in the same year that it came out. Now, this theme was a nod to the cartoon series of the same name that kept us all entertained on Cartoon Network, but the kicker with this is that it didn't quite hit the LEGO jackpot. In fact, it waved goodbye after a mere six months in some countries. I mean, talk about blink of an eye. I mean, that's what that means. It is worth noting that it falls under the Technic sub-theme umbrella too. It was a small lineup of six sets, each a snazzy action figure version of one of Ben's alien forms. These figures are all made up of a modest 14 to 22 pieces, so think Bionicle figures but with a touch of simplicity and specific parts. What's cool is that this theme brought in a revamped ball and socket joint, a smart move to replace the older, more break-prone version. And let's not forget the glow-in-the-dark eyes and the Omnitrix on their chest. Talk about a stylish touch. Bionicle! Everybody knows Bionicle! Let's now take a stroll down memory lane to the realm of Bionicle. Everybody knows this, it's LEGO's construction theme. I don't gotta explain it too much, but imagine sets that are like the Michelangelo's of LEGO, using modified Technic pieces and nifty ball and socket joints to craft these larger-than-life intricate figures. I remember even buying these in the little capsule things, bro. I had a couple of these growing up. Now, Bionicle wasn't just about the bricks because it also had its own comic book saga running alongside the original set releases. But hold on to your LEGO hats because when Bionicle took a bow, those comics transformed into graphic novel volumes. And for those novel enthusiasts, fear not because there were actual novels released too. This theme bursted onto the scene in 2001, rocking the LEGO world until its original hiatus in 2010. And what a run it had. I mean, gaining a cult-like status in the early 2000s. I, I was one of them. But wait, there's more! Because in 2014, brace yourself,
itself, Bionicle made a grand return, bringing new sets and all. Last though, the Encore lasted until 2016 before it took its final bow once again, never to return again. Unfortunate. Such a classic, it's sad that it got cancelled. The Black Falcons. These iconic sets made their debut in 1984 and continued their medieval adventures until 1992. Now, if you happen to be in Canada or Australia, you might know them by a different name, the Eagle's Crest. Across the border in the US, a catalog from 1989 dropped the names like Forest Men, Black Knights, and Guardians of the Grey Castles. Interestingly, this hinted at a tale where the Black Falcon, much like the Black Monarch, was a character leading the charge for the Guardians. Fast forward to 2012 though, and a distinguished Black Falcon Knight makes a cameo in a kingdom set, locking horns with the Lion Knights. It's like a medieval soap opera with knights and castles, right? And guess what? In 2021, the Black Falcons made a triumphant return in LEGO Ideas 21325 Medieval Blacksmith, proving that some classics are just timeless. But of course, it did get cancelled. Let's transition to the Black Knights. No, I'm not talking about the Fortnite skin. Now, it would be in LEGO's castle theme, where the Black Knights took their place in 1988. They had 13 epic sets, 2 grand castles, and they were kind of a big deal in the LEGO castle universe during their run. Now, what made them stand out, you might ask? It was the sleek black color of their fortifications that set the Black Knights apart from their medieval counterparts. Imagine towering castles, all decked out in mysterious black. Pretty cool, right? Oh, and they even had a symbol too, a blue wyvern dragon proudly gracing their shields and banners. Now, here's the twist. The dragon masters use a similar motif, just with a different color palette. And as time rolled on, the Black Knights took a bit of a backseat after 1994, but their legacy still lingered. The crest still made surprise appearances up until 1996, adding a touch of medieval flair to the Lego landscape. But if you're not super old, uh, you're not gonna know about this, because it is a really old set, and it did get cancelled pretty early on for itself. Cars. Back in 2010, Disney gave a nod to the little builders with a car steam in Duplo form. Yep, we're talking about those chunky bricks for the younger gearheads. Then, in 2011, they shifted gears and brought cars into the system world. That's the more intricate Lego realm that we all know and love. But, here's the plot twist with this one, because by 2012, the theme took an early pit stop and went off the shelves. Despite that, though, Lightning McQueen and the gang made a roaring comeback in 2017, all thanks to the brand new Cars 3 movie. The theme got a fresh start under the junior sub-theme, and now the newer sets might be a tad less complex than their 2011 counterparts, but they still pack that Cars charm. Anyways, I don't even know why LEGO would cancel Cars to begin with. City Center. Taking a stroll down LEGO memory lane once again to the bustling urban landscapes of City Center. Imagine it as a cool successor to Town Junior, inheriting that simplified building vibe. Fun fact about this one, across the pond in Europe, it just went by the name City. No fancy center attached. But it would be in 1999 that the city center was born. It brought its brick-filled charm, but alas, it waved goodbye to the shelves in 2000, so only a year again. But hold on tight though, because the next city-themed adventure, World City, hit the scene three years fashionably late in 2003. And some sets from the city center even made a comeback like the blocky stars of the brick show they are. Slick Kits. Interesting name, but this was LEGO's fourth major theme crafted with creativity for just the girls. Before it, we had the likes of Scala, Paradisia, and Belleville setting the stage. Now, Clickix took the LEGO scene by storm from 2003 to 2006, and the fun didn't completely fizzle out until 2008 in certain spots. Well, what made Click Kits click? Well, it put the spotlight on crafting bracelets and necklaces, so talk about accessorying in true LEGO style. Click Kits wasn't just about jewelry, though, because it also embraced the beauty realm, too. Think hairstyling tools, and then take it up a notch with the room decor sets featuring everything from cozy pillows to artsy frames. So either it didn't sell enough, some other reason, or girls didn't like it, I don't know, but this one did also get cancelled pretty early on. The Crusaders. Marking the glorious return of the castle theme. These brave knights in shining bricks made their debut alongside the Black Falcons, reigniting the castle building fever after the original knight's curtain call in 1978. Though, in the realms of Canada and Australia, our Crusaders and the Black Falcons donned the titles of Lioncrest and Eaglecrest factions, respectively. It's like they had their own secret identities in other parts of the world. But, fast forward to 1991 and 1992, and the Lioncrest Knights decided to roll with the Crusaders name for good, and it also cancelled. Dark Forest. It would be in 1996 this time when this castle sub-theme finally emerged, and it really brought something different to the table this time. And while Dark Forest didn't really grace the pages of European catalogs, it did make its way to certain shops across the continent. It's certainly an interesting distribution strategy, and maybe one that actually led to its downfall. Think of Dark Forest as the Forest Men's long-lost sibling, making a comeback after the Forest Men theme took its bow in 1990. They even shared the same distinguished crest established
established back in 1987, creating a nostalgic link between the past and also the present. What made Dark Forest truly stand out though were its sets featuring woodland hideouts cleverly crafted into hollow trees and rocks. It was like a secret society of Lego nature dwellers. Some Dark Forest minifigures sported familiar green tunics and forestmen hats reminiscent of their forestmen counterparts. Yet the minifigures brought a fresh twist, donning different torso pieces and hoods, adding a dash of variety to the enchanted forest. But alas, the Dark Forest vanished into the LEGO archives after 1996, leaving behind only three sets. Orient Expedition What really set Orient Expedition apart from the LEGO pack, though, was its unique twist. Each set boasting over 100 pieces came with stat cards or even a puzzle piece for a game board. Now, this wasn't just any game either. It was the Orient Expedition board game, adding an extra layer of excitement to the LEGO escape ad. The Orient Expedition was also the grand finale of the Adventurer's sub-themes, marking an end of an era. You could join Johnny Thunder, the brainy Dr. Kilroy, and the adventurous Pippin Reed as they teamed up with new friends from Asia. And together, this group embarked on a quest across the continent hot on the trail of the elusive Golden Dragon of Marco Polo and his three other treasures. So, what's the catch? Well, the mischievous Lord Sam Sinister and his partners in crime were in hot pursuit, aiming to beat our heroes to the prize. It was a race against time, weaving a tale of mystery, intrigue, and Lego magic into the vast landscapes of Asia. But if you thought that sounded pretty boring, maybe that's why it got canceled. Nexo Knights. Nexo Knights was a thrilling castle theme that LEGO really enjoyed, even if it only ran from 2016 to 2018. The story around it was that there was a land where five young knights stood as the last line of defense against the nefarious Jestro, Monstrux, and their menacing monster army. The adventure officially kicked off on January 2nd, 2016, although eagle-eyed fans might have caught a glimpse of some sets in select stores as early as late December 2015. Taking a page from the Ultra Agents playbook, Nexo Knights introduced also an app, sadly now discontinued also, that allowed users to interact with the digital realm using their physical LEGO pieces. It was innovation meeting imagination in the LEGO universe. But just like other LEGO hits such as Ninjago and LEGOs of Chima, Nexo Knights leaped beyond the brick and mortar with its own TV series, of course named Nexo Knights the Animated Series. The animated saga premiered on Cartoon Network on January 11, 2016, followed by a second season on August 13th of the same year. But the adventure didn't stop there. 2017 brought the fans a third and fourth season, adding layers to the epic tale, so I guess it was a pretty big hit. But unfortunately, as 2018 dawned, a fifth wave of sets was released, promising more thrills and spills for all the Nexo Knights fans. And as 2018 dawned, a fifth wave of sets was actually released, promising more thrills and spills for Nexo Knights fans. But nothing good always lasts, and despite the plans for a fifth season, the LEGO world was met with a twist of fate, because the series got an axe in 2018, leaving fans with only four seasons forever of brick-filled brilliance to cherish. Regardless though, it seemed like it did perform very well, and I do wonder why they canceled it. Everybody knows this one, Dora. In 2004, LEGO decided to join the Dora party and introduce the Dora the Explorer Explore sets. LEGO bricks bringing to life the vibrant world of Dora, Boots, and their friends. However, much like a fleeting expedition, the theme was short-lived and bit of farewell by the end of the same year. LEGO Quattro. Now, we're gonna take a trip down memory lane once again to the early 2000s when LEGO Quattro made its debut in the preschool scene, specifically in 2004. The scene was like the cool older sibling of Duplo designed with the tiny tots in mind, those adventurous little builders ages 1 to 3. Now, what's so special about Quattro, you might ask? Well, the name itself spills the bricks. Terrible joke, I'm so sorry. These blocks were crafted to be double the size of your trusty Duplo bricks and a whopping quadruple the dimensions of regular LEGO system blocks. So imagine the possibilities, building towers that even toddlers could conquer. And by the way, I did build towers. I had these growing up. I vividly remember it. I built towers and castles and it was a lot of fun. But wait, because there is more. These Quattro's wonders are not just big because they're also baby friendly. Perfect for those teething moments. And these bricks were also created to withstand the chewy exploration of, you know, the small builders that like Lego. They stand proud as the largest scale elements ever conjured up by the Lego wizards. The iconic Quattro logo featured an elephant and a nod to the good old Primo days. The iconic Quattro logo featured an elephant, a nod to the good old Primo days, but now a snazzy new color. Quattro initially strutted its stuff under the Lego Explore banner and later also got its own snazzy packaging. But guess what? It also got canceled. Roboforce. Diving into the intergalactic adventure of Roboforce, it's a nifty sub-theme of Lego space that graced the scene in 1997. Now with this one, it wasn't your typical worldwide sensation because it strutted its robot stuff exclusively in the US catalogs of that year. Yeah, so it was only in the United States, nowhere else. Roboforce were the righteous 
greatest heroes of the Lego Space Saga, taking on the good guy mantle. This four set wonderland showcased some seriously cool large robots. Think mecha styled awesomeness, decked out in two eye catching color schemes. First up, the orange class robots, the Robo Police Patrol of the Cosmo. These humanoid wonders sported buzzsaws, perfect for handling intergalactic crime or performing epic civilian rescues. And get this, the heads of these robots doubled as small spaceships. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Talk about versatility because escape pods or secondary vehicles, you name it, they had it. And on the other hand, we had the green class robots, bringing in the militaristic vibes with their animal-shaped wonders. The Robo-Raptor stole the show without a spacecraft, but made up for it with a sheer Robo-coolness. The Robo-Master, on the other hand, threw in a sweet Starcraft that might just remind you of the fan-favorite Unitron Starhawk 2. A nod to the classic, perhaps? Uh, I don't even know. And then there were the Power Play Robo-Force, or the Robos that were fueled by mysterious secret robo discs. Now, don't let the name fool you, because these power sources were rectangular wonders, not this. Go figure. But with this one, just like with every other one, the cosmic journey of the Roboforce was a short-lived affair with only four sets actually coming out, and then it just got canceled. We talked about this one earlier, it's the Forestmen. Alright, let's venture into the enchanting world of the Forestmen, a fascinating faction within the Lego Castle theme that emerged in 1987, like we talked about earlier, known as the Forest People Across the Pond in the UK. This woodland crew was all the rage, featuring seven captivating sets that whisked us away to a realm of trees, forts, and intriguing hideouts. The Forestmen saga unfolded until 1990, leaving us with cherished memories of their woodland exploits. But fast forward to 2010, and the minifigure steam threw us a delightful curveball. A Forestman figure armed with a shiny new bow piece, adding a modern twist to the classic charm, just so happened to show up. The Forestmen made their grand entrance in 1987 with the enchanting 6066 camouflaged outpost, setting the stage for more woodland wonders. The following year, though, brought additional sets and the iconic stag emblem, solidifying their place in LEGO lore. Until the twilight of 1990, though, a total of nine sets showcased the Forcemen in various roles, from stealthy hideouts to sturdy fortresses and evil humble carts. But even with all of this, the Forceman saga didn't end there, because in 1996, a brief revival emerged with the introduction of Dark Force, sharing the same crest and featuring woodland hideouts reminiscent of its predecessor. And with 19 original Forcemen, a Force Woman, and the later collectible minifigure releases, our Forest-loving friends total a charming 21. And it still got canceled, though. This one's a more popular one, Hidden Side. Now, this was a really captivating LEGO theme that made its debut on August 1st, 2019. It had a haunted town named Newbury, where ghosts roam freely, setting the stage for an immersive experience through an augmented reality app. Yes, really, the Hidden Side theme is not just about building sets, it's also about unraveling mysteries and capturing mischievous ghosts using the magic of AR. To join the ghost hunting fun, all you needed to do was just grab the app from the App Store or Google Play, whatever you use, and also probably have a set or two. Now, here's the cool part, though, because even though the sets were actually designed to sync with the app, they weren't your average run-of-the-mill AR gimmick set like everyone else tries to do. Each set boasted standard system set features, ensuring a blast of playability regardless of your AR adventures. And at the launch, the theme treated us to a spooktacular array of eight sets, each offering a unique piece of the haunted puzzle. But like I always say, good things must come to an end, and Hidden Side actually ended off and got cancelled at around the end of 2020 or 2020. However, fans received a small consolation prize with an update to the Hidden Side app in March of 2021 for some reason, but it doesn't matter. It's gone. Futuron. Futuron was quite the intriguing sub-theme in the LEGO Space Saga that graced us with its presence from 1987 to 1990. Imagine a group of intraped space explorers, the Futuron astronauts, navigating the celestial expanse in a quest for discovery. But hold on, it's not all smooth sailing, because these cosmic pioneers found themselves in a friendly competition with the astronauts from Blacktron, adding a dash of intergalactic rivalry to the mix. And what's fascinating is that the Futuron astronauts decided to pay homage to their classic space predecessors, donning a familiar color scheme and logo. It's like a cosmic reunion with a modern twist. And with a stellar lineup featuring more than 17 different sets, Futuron firmly established itself as one of the larger and more intriguing factions in the vast LEGO space universe. And finally, Speed Racer. Speed Racer was one of the most anticipated themes to hit the shelves back in 2008. It had sleek racing cars, adrenaline pumping speed, and the thrilling vibe of the film Speed Racer, which in turn took inspiration from the iconic anime by Tatsunoko Productions. And it, but even with all of that, Speed Racer, despite its promise, was a bit of a pit stop in the LEGO lineup, zooming onto the scene in 2008 and making a swift exit the same year. And you're probably wondering, why, th why that? Well, it turns out that the film didn't quite rev up the box office as expected. Anyways, which set, movie, product, 
item or anything that was on this list do you wish never got canceled? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Oh my god, subscribe!